Also, just a reminder, uh, get math, physics 12. I think I have an electro, I think I have a circuitry tutor uh, tutorial videos. Do I have a circuitry tutorial? I might not. Oh, I do. This is the one I think I did last year ish. Two years ago. This is a whole hour long, which I don't think we're going to spend that long today. But for those of you who've been away for a big chunk of this or a country and kind of, you know, there you go. All right. Also, you can rewatch the lessons. Meanwhile, any questions from the review that you're going, holy schmoly, I have no idea how the heck you got that. Suggesting to me people haven't started the review, which is okay, I guess. A couple of days. Alex, were there any, because I know you've been working on this, any weird ones that you were wondering about? 39. Once again, you guys can write this down or, in fact, I'm going to do it this way, aren't I, Mr. Duick? Tutorials, Physics 12, New Page, Circuitry. Now, this one looked, this is mine from last year. This looks pretty good too. Okay. Let's go. You gonna make it, Cassidy? You gonna make it? Yeah. yeah you sure? Yeah. Worried. Let's delete all the ink in this one, Mr. Duick. Let's call this circuitry tutorial 2011. What number, Alex? 39B. Whoop. No, I want this button here. Quit, quit. 39. About here, I'm going to guess. A little far. 39B. Okay. So the B asks, the bulb is now replaced by a lower resistance, brighter bulb. The terminal voltage will now be less than, greater than, or the same as. To do that, I really need this diagram. And I assume you also kind of want me to answer C at the same time. All right. Right now, the terminal voltage is calculated by 9 volts. That's the height of your chairlift minus the voltage that you lose going through here, which is going to be I times, and traditionally we use a lowercase r because it's supposed to be a tiny resistance. Okay. So what affects the terminal voltage? Not your EMF. That's constant. What affect, and, and not the internal resistance because that's built mat into the battery. That doesn't change either. What does change is this current. What does this current depend on? It depends on how big this resistor here is, okay? Because total current equals total chairlift voltage, which I can now call EMF, divided by total resistance, which is going to be if this is big R. You with me so far? So here's the question then. If I replace this light bulb by a lower resistance bulb, this number here will get smaller or bigger? Smaller. This total down here will get smaller or bigger? Smaller. This answer right here, because now you're dividing 9 by a smaller number, the current will get 
I'll give the answer and then we'll figure out what the correct response is, okay? So as R total, I would say this. I would call this R1. As R1 decreases, I would write decreases if this was a test. R total decreases. You okay with that? And since I total equals 9 divided by R total, if that gets smaller, yes? So what's going to happen to this number that we're subtracting? That doesn't change, but this is going to get bigger, so this total number here is going to get bigger. You're going to have 9 minus a larger number, which means the answer is going to be, okay? Then I would say, as part of my, so I've written this, then I would say, therefore, I times little r increases. I write VAB, sorry, I know it's V terminal. It used to be VAB, and that's drummed into my consciousness. Now it's V term. The terminal voltage is going to be this minus a bigger number than before. Therefore, be terminal smaller. Does that make sense? Okay. By the way, you could also, since you actually knew little r, you could actually uh, calculate the total current. You could calculate the resistance. Make up a smaller resistance. Did you calculate the resistance of this? Didn't ask you to, so you might not have. But you, you could make up a, just make up a smaller number, stick that there, crunch everything and, and show eh, it is smaller, but there's a lovely algebraic example that makes my little math nerd heart go pitter pat. Okay? Terminal is always this minus the bump. Okay? It's always this minus the bump. Now, in a lot of the diagrams, in a lot of the circuit diagrams, like this one, we didn't give you the bump. Oh, that is the terminal voltage. I just subtracted the bump already. Compared with, ah, that's the EMF. This minus whatever voltage I lose going through here would be the terminal voltage. Oh, and they told me that apparently this minus that worked out to 2.7. Hmm, I guess if I could somehow figure out what that voltage was, I could get the EMF because it would be 2.7 plus whatever that is getting my EMF. Hmm, how would I figure that out? I think if I knew total current, I could do all sorts of stuff. Okay. By the way, oh, they told me 1.5 amps right there. So now I know the voltage drop there. 1.5 amps. Now I know the voltage drop there. 2.7 plus this would give me my total chairlift height. Is that all right? Yep. Any other specifics before I... I'll go through my last year tutorial in a really quick nutshell. That's the one that we'll use. Alex, any others? Okay. Well, here's what I did apparently last year. It looks like last year, because I guess I liked my kids better last year or something like that. I uh, cut and pasted a bunch of questions from an older review. I will put all these reviews online. I've kept them from you. These will be your final exam study guides, along with the four provincial exams that I gave you to practice. I have old reviews. Some of them you'll have seen already because some of the questions have appeared on the big packages because there's only so many provincial exams. And I cut and paste because the graphics, Shannon, are a pain. I did all these before I had a tablet. Now I can do circuitry diagrams by hand, easy. But to try and do this in Word, that alone would take me probably half an hour or 45 minutes. And there's no way I'm doing it. It's still any of those. You ready? This asks, what's the terminal voltage? Alex, this reinforces your question. The terminal voltage is going to be that minus whatever I lose going through there. It's going to be the EMF minus whatever I lose going through there as voltage. And since voltage is I times R, it's that. So even though this question is asking that, really what I'm going to spend most of my time finding, I think, is I. Because I know that it's 4.5. Oh, and I know a little art, 0.63. How can I do that? Oh, wait a minute. I know I. They told me. Sheesh, this is straight plug and chug. This, Alex, is where I would use the equation. I would say, you know what? It's 4.5 minus 0.8 times 0.63, which is what? 
anyone on your calculator really crunch the numbers quickly, please. And I notice I only have A, B, C. I'm worried D might be the correct answer. It might have got chopped off when I cut and pasted this. I don't know, though. What, what is the answer? Three point, oh, C. Okay. Again, you can write these down or I'll print this up for you after. These are questions you haven't seen. I'm going to suggest that you just watch because trying to write out these circuits takes a long time. The circuit shown in the bulb and the diagram below consists of a 9-volt battery. That's the EMF. The actual terminal voltage will be this minus whatever I lose going through there. And a 3.5 watt bulb. Is this the same question that we just did? Yeah. It is identical, isn't it? With it's, it's set up differently. Oh well, just for the heck of it. You know what? Ha! Now it's a completely different question. Ta-da! Okay. They want you to first of all find the internal resistance, little r. The key idea is they told me two things over here, and I've tried to tell you anytime there's a resistor, Spencer, where they tell you two pieces of information, you know four. I know the current is 0.3. What's the equation that relates power and current? Find me the voltage that I lose going through here. Quick, quick, quick. This should all be typing on your calculator and show your work on the test, but yeah, you too. It's going to be 3.5 divided by 0.3, yes? 11.7? 11.67? Really? Okay, I've screwed up. Make that a 0.7. A 0.7 a point seven. Try that. Ah, thank you, because I was getting more than the battery was putting out. Whoops. Okay. So it's that. Five volts. Oh. How much must I lose here then? Chairlift is nine volts. I lose five volts. How much do I lose going through the battery? Oh, and what's the current through this little tiny internal resistor? 0.7, after I crossed it out several times. Oh, if the voltage is 4 and the current is 0.7, R equals V over I, yes? 4 over 0.7, what must the internal resistance be? 5.7. And you'll notice, although I could probably have used that terminal voltage equation, my teaching has evolved. I hardly ever use that anymore. On the, on the answer key, you'll see I used it fairly often. When I first started teaching this, this unit, I didn't have a good handle on I was teaching it really mathematically. Now, I think I have a better understanding for what's going on in a circuit, an intuitive understanding. We already did this one. Okay. I'm spending lots of time on terminal voltage because that was my last lesson and my gut instinct is most of you haven't done the homework or have a lousy understanding of it. And since it overlaps with everything else, let's practice that and it'll take care of everything else. Uh, what's the terminal voltage here? Have they told me two of anything anywhere? Do I know both there? Do I know two things there? No. Now I'm going to have to fall back on that. I'm going to find total resistance. Sorry, total current. Total current is going to be total voltage. Yes? That's my EMF. Divided by the total resistance. Those are in series. This will always be in series, by the way, because it's built right into the battery. Unless you somehow cut the battery in half and wire it up, wires bypassing it, it's always going to be in series. What's my total resistance? 4.5. Hey, what is the current flowing through here? One point three amps. How many volts do I lose going through here if this is one point three amps? One point three three amps. What's the voltage when I travel through this internal, what's the voltage loss when I travel through this internal resistance? What's the bump at the bottom, at the end of the chairlift? 
How high was the chairlift? How high is the bump? What's left? That's your terminal voltage. Oh, what if this resistance changed? If this got bigger, that would get bigger, that would get smaller, that would get smaller, this answer would be bigger. By the way, dumb answer. Right? And also a dumb answer. You're losing something. I would argue at least this is a true-false question. When could this be possible? If you had two batteries facing each other and one was bigger and you were clearly recharging. Do I have two batteries facing each other and one was bigger? No. Okay, 29. The cell shown in the diagram supplies a one amp current to resistors R1 and R2. Ah, they gave me two things. What's the terminal voltage? By the way, I'll show you now how I can find the terminal voltage without even knowing the chairlift height. Look up for a second, Cassidy, just watch. Isn't this plus this voltage the same as this minus bump? In other words, Shannon, isn't the terminal voltage going to have to be the same height as both of those hills put together? Does that make sense? Chairlift minus bump. You know what? That's the terminal voltage right there if I combine those two. And I'm able to do that without even finding what the, how big the battery is, the EMF. A little shortcut. So I could say, can you go uh, I times R? What's the voltage here? What's V1? Sorry? 4.5? What's V2? I times R. Seven point two. The terminal voltage is also the total voltage outside of the battery, which means it's going to be uh, 4.5 plus 7.2 which is 11.7. Uh, I think B is going to say, all right, what does the battery say on the side? What's the EMF? What's printed on the side of the battery? My gut is 12, because usually it's a 12 volt battery, and it's 11.7, right? but let's find out. Oh yeah, what's the EMF? Okay, now, what's the current going through this guy too? 1.8 amps? How many volts did we lose going through this guy? I can do that in my head. 0.9 volts. How high did the chairlift have to be, the EMF, so that I could lose 4.5, 7.2, and a little bump of 0.9? Or, I think the EMF is 11.7, that's those two, plus the little bump that was 0.9. I think the EMF is 12.6 volts. That's what's printed on the side of your battery. Okay. Here's your reward for coming in. What if I change the current? What will happen to the EMF? It's a trick question. Nothing. It never changes. The EMF is constant. The terminal voltage will change, but this is printed on the side of your battery. This depends on the chemicals in your battery. No matter what I stick in and out of here, whatever, no matter what I connect it to, the EMF doesn't change. What does change is the current flowing through, which changes the terminal voltage because you lose more or less going through. Is that okay? Scholarship question. This used to be a scholarship question. I think this is now doable. Okay. It says, is this from the review? Did I put this one on the review? Yeah? Okay. Apparently someone must have asked me this one last year, I think. I must have had some keeners. They were doing scholarship questions. Not like you. Okay. Um, says, when a power supply whose EMF is 6 volts is connected to a light bulb, it delivers a 3 amp current. The same supply is connected to two identical bulbs wired in parallel. The current is 5 amps. 
find the internal resistance of the supply. Hmm. This one's pretty tough. This one's pretty tough. How did I do this one? I can't even remember. I must have. What was that, 50-something? I said, okay, in circuit one, the total voltage is I total, R total. R total is six volts, the total voltage, divided by three. If I ignore this, I'm ignoring the terminal voltage. I'm using, you know what? That divided by that is two ohms. This plus this, the little R plus the mystery R, has to add up to two ohms for this to get three amps. Oh, and in circuit two, the total resistance, if you get five amps, has to add up to 1.2 ohms. This is little r. I found the parallel was r over two that has to add to 1.2. So I ended up with those two equations. r plus big R equals two, r plus r over two equals 1.2. This is a system. This is well beyond what you're going to be asked. So somebody must have asked me this one last year. So if you're freaking out about this one, don't. But it's nearly cool. What else did I go over last year? Um. Yeah. No, this is better. What power is dissipated by the three resistors in the circuit shown below? Is this actually number eight from your review? It is? See, I was pulling some from an old. This is total power. It's phrased just slightly differently. Let me see. Oh, no, it is total power. Okay, it is the same question. Uh, total power is going to be the power in here plus the power in here plus the power in here. How can you find that? Is there anywhere, Matt, where they told me two pieces of information on one resistor? That's where I'll attack this. I know resistance. I know power. Well, can you tell me the power equation that has resistance in it? Except instead of writing IRI, What's an easier way to write I times I? We can find current. The current is going to be the power divided by the resistance square rooted. Uh, in mass, plus or minus, but we don't have negative current here. So, you know, physics, we ignore negative answers quite often. Uh, the current is going to be 9.2 divided by 33 square rooted 0.528 amps why does that help because now I know the voltage I times R times 33 17.42 why does that help can we shake hands here and meet up here now I know the voltage 17.42 volts. Oh, and you know why else that helps, Shannon? I know the voltage here, because how high is the chairlift? And this is terminal voltage, that's fine. 24 minus 17.42. Uh, What's left for that guy? 24 minus that answer. 6.576. Why does that help? Well, if that's the voltage and that's the resistance, now I know the current. Current is that divided by resistance. I should just add that up. 0 0.657, 0 0.658. That's the total current. If I got 0 0.528 going this way and I got 0 0.658 coming out, how much must I have going this way? I guess 0 0.12, 0 0.13. 
and now I can go, hey, what's the total power? VI, 6.576 times 0.658 plus V, oh, I already know the power there, 9.2 plus VI. Pretty sure the total power, oh, this is, uh, I'm missing a decimal. Yeah, whoops. Total power is 15.8, 16 watts. Apparently somebody asked me this question. This must be from the review as well. Go ahead. Sorry, I just did one question. Forgot to turn the recording back on. That looks like what I went through last year. Any other questions you would like me to go over that you're saying, yeah, I'm not so sure about? Anything that came to mind that somehow jogged your memory? So just a reminder then, this is online on pitmath.com. Click on Physics 12, click for tutorials, electrostatic tutorial. This one looks to be an hour long. I think if I recall, I think I went through like the whole unit here. Let me see, skip over to here. Yeah, it looks like wattage and resistance. Uh, there you go. EMF. Yeah, it looks like a pretty good tutorial, I think. So don't forget about that one. Ah! Great question. I've been asked, what do I like? I got to pause the recording and I got to freeze the screen, and I got to look at my test, because I haven't photocopied it yet, which means it's not fresh in my mind. I'm going to be doing that right after I let you guys go. So, pause the recording. So I've been asked to mention which questions I like, as though somehow you're not going to pay as much attention to the other questions. I hope you'll do them all, of course. Um, there is going to be a question somewhere that asks, do you understand how meters have to be placed? Like number one. Okay, so we did talk about, in the very first lesson, where an amp meter would have to go to measure current, the wire has to go right through it, where a voltmeter has to go to measure voltage, it actually set, attaches in parallel at two locations and measures the change in height. You can't just hook a voltmeter up on one thing. It's always finding out what's the potential difference, what's the change in voltage. Uh, number two is fine. Three you can ignore. That's actually going to be a couple of units from now. So transformers, that'll actually be the last lesson of the year. Not the movie, but the electric device. I mean, all of the circuitry diagrams are pretty fair game, but let me see if I can find one that looks kind of like... Sure, something like number nine. There's going to be a question like number nine where I ask you to find the EMF, giving you an internal resistance. And in this case, I gave you one extra piece of information. That's fair game. Or I'd feel comfortable not giving you that and expecting you to find one over I total. I total by one over R parallel plus one over R parallel, all that the long way. Um, I mean, something like 12 is also totally fair game. Oh, but they gave you the they gave you two pieces of information. I guarantee that's the domino that will start that question falling apart. There is going to be some kind of a question where there's a before and an after kind of an aspect where I either say you remove a resistor or you add a resistor or you do something. And you can either just crunch it algebra uh, numerically or I did one at the beginning of this where we did it algebraically because I was a nerd, right? Power is good. 18, like again, know how to, uh, uh, where the instruments would go.
Uh, you can nuke 25 for now. That's actually uh, Transformers. That comes in a later lesson. A later unit. Uh, um, I don't like 27, not because it's a bad question, but because in number 27, hello, number 27, They picked lousy numbers. I'll show you what I mean really quickly. Oh, too far. Um, see, I they want me to find the uh, yo screen still frozen. Jeez, I thought I was scrolling through all these with you guys. The screen still frozen. Now we're good. <sighs> I said the EMF is equal to the I plus the IR for some reason. I said I need the I total. I found I total. And I found the initial EMF. The initial EMF of this battery, which I did not know, was 1.54 volts. Then, it should lower when you hook it up to a higher current. The new terminal voltage should be lower. What was the original terminal voltage? 1.4. What's the EMF? 1.5. The only reason I don't like this is your terminal voltage they give is also 1.5, which should be lower. It's 1.54 and 1.47. But to two sig figs, it's 1.5 and 1.5. I just don't like those numbers because now you're saying, wait a minute, the EMF is the same size as the terminal voltage. The bump at the end of the chairlift is zero, but I just calculated the bump. It's not zero. Yeah, bad numbers. I don't like that. Yeah, something like 28 is totally fair game. Um, 32 is good. Asking you to find a terminal voltage and an EMF. Yeah, Thirty nine is good. Uh, you can nuke forty. Power lines, that's good. We're going to do that later on when we look at how generators work, how hydroelectric generators work. Forty-one is fine. I mean, uh, Shannon, any circuit where I ask you to find anything, to me that's all fair games, and there's a gazillion of those. So if you do those, you'll be in great shape. I'm now trying to look for specific weird ones here. Uh, what was this last one? I was not paying attention. Uh, that's good. Gives you two pieces of information. That's Here would be an example of a two battery system, but I hope you can see it's reasonably straightforward. The net voltage is three volts, the eight volts is winning, so downhill would be in this direction. What's your total resistance? 14, so the current is three over 14, I over uh, V over R. Uh, number 50, you have to remember the difference between which way the electrons flow and which way we defined current to be. We said current is in this direction, but in real life the electrons flow this way. It's just we wanted everything to be positive and going downhill because it makes the math way easier. Yeah. It's nice to think that you're losing voltage when you go through a resistor, not actually gaining electron. I'd rather be losing. I think there's one question somewhere with a switch before and after or open or close. There's a bunch of those on your review, Shannon, so you should be okay. 52 is totally fair game. Okay, so 52, there is going to be one where you don't have both on any one resistor. You don't have two pieces of information, and Shannon, the only way you can solve it is to rewrite it as one single total resistor. There's going to be one of those for sure. But there's also going to be one where you have two pieces of information. That's your domino that causes the rest of the question to fall apart. Uh, 54 is crazy. 55 actually isn't that bad anymore, but that's a little hot, little tough, but 
for Pete's sake, that's a 22. It's 1 over 8 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 22. There's your combined. Combine it with the 10. You've got R total, V total. Now you can find current. Once you know current, you can fill in almost everything and start walking your ski runs. It wasn't that bad. So that's kind of some questions that I like. I don't know how many hints there were there, but hopefully that's a, a start. Is that okay? Any other questions before I press pause or stop?